I think everybody who's involved with lemurs is concerned for the future. We're in a finite island that cannot infinitely be exploited and ravaged. And if present trends continue, the outlook for any of the natural habitat or any of the lemurs is fairly poor. Lemurs are members of the order primates, that is to say, the large group of mammals to which human beings also belong. And they're found uh, uniquely in Madagascar and on a couple of adjacent islands of the Comoro group. An evolutionary radiation is the diversification of different species from the same ancestor. And once a new kind of organism, like a primate, comes into a new environment, as happened in Madagascar about 60 million years ago. There are many, many different ways in which that environment can be exploited. It's very hard to say exactly how many species of lemur there are because new species are being described all the time, but in general terms there now looks to be about 30 to 35 species of lemurs. And it shows us just what the potential of primates is to occupy an enormous range of different habitats. Habitat destruction takes place on a much shorter time scale than evolutionary change. And the amount of change that's happening so rapidly in Madagascar as a result of human activities is clearly something with which no evolutionary process can cope. Now we are here in Ranmafana, Ranmafana National Park in the southeastern rainforest of Madagascar. This place used to be loved by loggers, but since the park was created, the forest started to be protected. Here in Ranmafana, there are 12 different species of lemurs. Seven, they are active during the day, and five, they are active during the night. There are many ways of studying lemurs. Depends on what you want to look at. I look at their behavior and how the behavior fits in the habitat. For example, we want to know which fruit and what plants they rely on. Because if we can continue to protect the habitat, that will help to protect them or to conserve them. Wow. Every five minutes, we take note what yeah. species of tree, who the closest neighbor, the closest trail, because we want to know where do they go to estimate their home range. And if they eat, what do they eat? Some species cope better than the others. If you're a specialist on your diet, and if people cut down your food, you're gone. For example, the bamboo lemur. They exclusively eat bamboo, and if people cut down those plants, they're gone. They can disappear very fast. Different lemurs are affected in different ways by the environmental destruction that's going on in Madagascar. Some lemurs are endangered, some are critically endangered, some are uh, vulnerable, and some are threatened. The less vulnerable ones are the ones that do well in secondary habitats, in habitats that have been altered by people. We're at a site called Beza Mafali, and it incorporates a protected reserve as well as areas outside of the reserve. And our research here focuses on the effects of fragmentation and changes in habitat on lemur biology and their behavior. We study lemur cata, which is the ring-tailed lemur. It's the type of lemur most people are, uh, have seen in zoos. Um, they're one of the most far-ranging of the lemurs. They're incredibly adaptable. And one of the things that we're kind of interested in is what is the biology of adaptation or what is the biology of avoiding becoming extinct? And because ring-tailed lemurs are so widespread, and that's not to say they're not threatened, 
but they seem to be able to deal a lot behaviorally and biologically with habitat change. Female. I think what we're seeing in terms of the troops we were looking at today is a troop that is actually utilizing some of the anthropogenic change. They will go out and utilize local people's crops, so they're actually exploiting some of the habitat that's been degraded and turned into cropland for their own use. In terms of the ringtail lemurs, because they are rather generalist, they do seem to adjust to different types of disturbance. As Michelle mentioned a few moments ago, it doesn't mean that we don't have to watch out or think about it, and it doesn't mean there aren't very real threats to long-term survival, but ringtails specifically seem to deal with things in ways that some of the more specialized lemurs don't. But there's always limitations to us. So. That's what we're trying to understand is where where, where are you when you get to the limits of even a ringtail lemur in terms of being able to adapt? I used to feel depressed when I come here because again, you see the habitat changing and a lot of fragmentation occurring. I feel a little bit better now because we're trying to really get a handle on what sort of ways you can interact with local people because that's the reality. What you saw around here is the reality of Madagascar. I think what we ought to be looking for in terms of conservation is habitats to protect. And what we need to do is to find those places where with the least disturbance to local people or to the greatest benefit of local people, tracts of forest that support the native fauna of Madagascar can be conserved.